Hello again. Um, what we're going to be talking about today is combining some of the properties of printmaking with a painting technique um, that you've seen before in some of my other videos. This is a piece of plexiglass that has work on both sides of it so that you're seeing through from the front to the back. This is a print of a, a similar image. Um, the, this is a, <clears throat> a lithograph um, using a technique called um, a lithographic touche wash. At least that's what it used to be um, <clears throat> back in the day. Lately, uh, most printmakers, instead of using lithographic touche, which is a greasy material that has been um, uh, dissolved in something like turpentine, lithotine typically, uh, we now, most printmakers use a laser toner that has been dissolved in denatured alcohol. And so this is a print off of what's called a pronto plate which is a polyester plate that looks like a piece of paper where the, the uh, toner wash was put on it and then inked up and printed on this piece of paper. And what I've wanted to do is to get that same quality, which I'll show you in a minute how we do it, onto a piece of plexiglass. This print can be printed numerous times, so I usually do editions of 10 this is a one-time thing. Um, so this is a painting, but with the lithographic touche wash. Okay, uh, I don't want to cause too much confusion, but it's going to be necessary to talk about several different processes. So first of all, this is a pronto plate that I'm getting ready to do a lithograph from. Pronto plate, remember, is not paper, even though it looks like paper, it's made of polyester. This image has been run through a laser printer. And the image that you see is toner from the laser printer deposited on the pronto, uh, pronto plate. I can roll this up in ink in any color I want, even though it's printed in black. I could roll it up in black ink, print black. I could roll it up in pink, and it'll print pink. Even though, as I say, the, the um, laser printer prints it out in black. Now, what we're going to do, and I'm going to show you an experiment on another Pronto plate. These things are expensive, so these are expensive experiments. But just so you'll see what happens when you paint the toner, which this is um, laser toner. Laser, laser toner is a powder. And what the powder is is fine particulates that are made of individual particles of plastic. And so when you dissolve this toner in denatured alcohol, then you're going to get this technique that I'm talking about, which is not what this is. This is just a print of a drawing. Um, you're going to get this technique that is uh, a French word, actually, peau de crapaud, which means the skin of the toad, because it looks like a toad's skin when it dries. So that's what we're going to do. So I've put a bit of this powder, the toner, into this cup and I'm going to pour in some denatured alcohol. I'm going to swirl it around with a paintbrush. And we're just going to put some on this, this uh, pronto plate and see what happens.
It's a little bit hard to control, so if you wanted to draw something like, um, I don't know, a circle. you'll notice that it will start to spread out. You can put some drops into it. Let's paint, paint a big area here. It's very dark, looks sort of like Mickey Mouse. And it's going to start changing. You see what it's doing there. There's a stain around the outside that would uh, pick up ink from the roller also, but it's going to dry into these beautiful textures. And I'm fond of random events. I don't, I'm not terribly concerned about controlling right now. Although, in the end, what I'm going to do is draw over the top of these textures um, to get what I want, and then I'll show you that in a minute. In addition to the black toner, uh, I have three laser printers of different sizes, so I can try to get as big a print as possible. But they make a color laser printer and it uses color toner. I don't have a color laser printer, but I bought um, some bottles of the uh, color laser toner on eBay. And I'm going to, it, I, I find that the um, color toner doesn't give me as nice a result of this skin of the toad thing, which is you can see is developing here uh, as the black but I think in this painting that I'm getting ready to do I'm going to try to use the color toner so um, I'm going to mix up uh, yellow and blue and maybe throw a little bit of red in it just to uh, neutralize the color so yellow and blue obviously make green the red is the opposite of green so that'll help neutralize it we're going to actually do a um, a painting of the toad of a toad and so I want a kind of greenish color so I'm, I don't see how I'll run some experiments on this piece of um, pronto plate and we'll see how that looks what I find is that the color toner tends to clump up more than the black and uh, you'll see that in a minute okay this is the powdered toner before I've put the uh, denatured alcohol in it and you can see it's red, yellow, and blue mixed. Okay, what I got out of that was just basic ugliness. Um, didn't come out the way I wanted. So I'm going to start over with that and start just with the red and yellow and drop a drop of this into it and see if I can get more of what I'm looking for. Okay, now I'm going to run my finger across this part here and you see it just wipes away because what has happened is as the um, alcohol evaporates out what you're left with is basically the original powder we could just brush this off with a brush and right back into the container again and it would be the same thing it was to begin with so if you're interested in using this as a printmaking technique, you've got to do something to fuse it to the, um, uh, to the pronto plate. This, the print over here that has run through the um, printer, what laser printers do is they have a heating element in it and it, it melts this stuff and basically fuses it into position. So in order to do a painting with any of this, 
we're going to have to fix it to this piece of plastic that we're going to put it on. Or whatever you put it on, you're going to have to fix it. If you put it onto a, um, a gessoed board to get that texture, you'd still have to find some way to fix it on there. So at some point, we're going to figure out a way to do that. Uh, if you are interested in the printmaking, you should consult the videos of Adele Henderson. And just look her up and you'll find her experiments with that. Where she puts the pronto plate in the oven for a certain time and heats it that way. Sometimes you can do it with the heat gun. But it, you run the danger of blowing it around all over the place. Or warping the pronto plate, which means you couldn't print on it. Um, but she uses a technique where she drizzles paint thinner or turpentine, something like that, over it very gradually, and it soaks into it and melts the stuff and fuses it to the plate that way. We're not going to use that technique. Now, I would encourage you to do as much experimentation as possible. Here's what's happened. In the, in the first washes that I did in the color, there's too much toner in it. So I went back and added a little more um, of the alcohol into it, and then you get these beautiful techniques. So when you're ready to start your painting, you know, fool around with it on paper or something. The, the, the beauty of this Pronto plate is that it's impervious to water the, the or liquid the ink and the alcohol don't soak into it they sit on the surface and it's that sitting on the surface that causes these textures um, if you've ever seen a coffee stain that's been left uh, like a coffee ring they're quite beautiful even though a lot of people want them cleaned up I usually admire them for a bit. Isn't that nice? And there it is in black. But, you know, I want to be working in color here. If I were printing it, it wouldn't make any difference whether it's in color or not, because even, even though this is a color, I could ink it up in, as I said, pink or yellow or black or whatever. Because it's the same process. It's the, um, the toner particles that are going to be holding the lithographic ink. But that's way more interesting than this one, in my opinion. So before we start this new painting from scratch, I'll show you a finished piece done like this. This is on plexiglass, and if you've seen my previous videos, you know that um, I start with a piece of plexiglass, coat it with whatever painting I'm doing, then polyester resin, then sand the hell out of it, and then finish it with an automotive clear coat. But, so you can see this is a rabbit, and this, this side has the toner washes in it and uh, those are the black toner washes in the background. Back behind here is, is a technique that I've used in the past, so you, can, you see through this to the back side. And of course the other rabbit uh, is made of electrical wire that is drilled and knotted on the back side. You know, took hours and hours and hours of drilling and so on. Uh, but uh, that's anyway a finished piece. So what we're going to be working on is a piece of plexiglass that actually had another image on there and I sanded it off. It's been sanded on both sides. The sanding um, and especially what I use is a um, an air powered orbital sander that allows me to wet sand it. This is 400 grit. So I get a surface that is similar to 
a very nice piece of printmaking paper. So that gives it a little bit of texture to hold on to. Uh, you know, I got an air compressor over there, and all kinds of tools in here, which you should also have. If you're going to make art, you need the tools. When I was young, I avoided buying things. Now, I buy everything I need. You know, if I need a new tool, that's part of the fun, going out to Harbor Freight and buying it. You can get anything on eBay. I'm sure I got this on eBay. Um, and a nice big air compressor like the one back there lets you work for a long time without losing um, the air pressure. So um, I'm ready, ready, ready to work on this now. And I've drawn two frogs. One's going to be over the top of the other one. I'm going to put these pieces of paper underneath my plexiglass. I have an idea of where I want them to go. Uh, I'm not going to be um, very restrictive about this. You know, I, I'm going to um, use the drawings as guides later on, but first of all, I just want to know where, where I want my washes to be. Do I want the big wa big frog? I think I want the big frog underneath. The other one, I'm going to tilt it a little bit. That's a, for design. So that le lets me know where I want to put my washes. And, you know, I don't know how this is going to come out. I could do a more precise drawing after the wash dries, and we'll see how I feel about that. Um, so I know basically where I want these things to be. I've got my um, color that I thought was okay already mixed up, so I'm going to start dabbing him on the upper frog. By the way, Wear your face masks when you go out, idiots. You want to make art, you don't want to die. So what I seem to have done was filmed about five minutes of me working and you looking at the top of my head. But uh, here's what results from that. On the top part, the color is over the general area of the frog drawing. And the bottom part, I used um, the black and some of the brown. So that's what we've got so far. That should be drying. It probably is dry by now, but so you, let's show you a close-up of those textures. And um, the next thing we're going to do is fix that to the surface. 